peppers didn't come up, chives didn't come up. And the thing that I really am surprised by is my beans didn't come up. Okay, nothing like technical difficulties to really make your day interesting. I don't know, maybe sometimes it's fun to just talk to a camera for five or six minutes and then the camera suddenly turn off because it wasn't doing anything because somebody forgot to hit record. Oh well, welcome back again. I appreciate you joining to see this is where we're at in this effort to turn this place into a suburban homestead. Hopefully my homesteading skills will develop more rapidly than my videography skills will. Coming to you again here from the Forbidden Zone behind me. If you don't know what I mean by the Forbidden Zone, check out the episode where I went to the farmer's market. In fact, now it's a great time to just remind you, if you want to keep up with how things are going as I go through this crazy dream of becoming a homesteader, go ahead and subscribe. I'll go ahead and remind you to do that now. Subscribe so you can always keep up with what's happening. Even uh, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new adventure. Wanted to give you an update on how well the garden is doing now that I've planted everything into the ground. I apologize, this video is coming out kind of late and the footage we're gonna see is in two weeks after having planted it, figured that was a good time to just try to show you where we were, how things were going. You can see the lettuce is doing really well. We've got our romaine lettuce. We've got our red skyphos. We've got some butter crunch and some Nevada crunch varieties growing. And this is about two weeks in after having put it into the ground. And at this point, uh, in fact, that very same day, uh, the missus came and cut a few leaves so she could put some on a sandwich. Um, since that time, we have eaten uh, several salads. So it is doing very, very well. Um, as you can see in this picture, but there's time, even more time has passed and it's really flourishing now. Here are our green onions. Uh, we have to plant green onions, spring onions. Uh, one of the things that uh, the missus has got some food sensitivities to is onions of all things, but for some reason, the green onion tops, the spring onions are fair game for her. Um, what I did was I planted the actual bulbs that were left over after we had used all of the, the green onion tops on a, a bunch that she had bought at the grocery store. So did I plant the bulbs, see what would happen. You can see the, the green uh, tops are coming through and we'll just cut those off as long as we possibly can until we have to replant those. I planted some zucchini uh, direct sow into the ground, sowing some seed. Planted uh, two to three seeds in each one of the areas here. All of those seeds germinated, came up great. Um, need to thin out these so there's only one good vine growing in each one, but really, really pleased to see how well the zucchini are doing. We actually had two cucumber plants started for us by Tammy's mom. One of them uh, did not make the journey very well from her house. Uh, Sometimes you know the starts just don't last. Nobody has 100%. But you can see that the one that we was a start is growing very well. We did some direct sow, put some seed straight into the ground for the other position. And uh, that has grown up. So we're looking forward to having some really nice cucumbers this summer. Our eggplants are doing well. You can see that uh, I, had, I bought eggplants started at the farmer's market and three of the original four I put in the ground did really well even though some of the leaves are still a little uh, burnt looking on the edges uh, from when they were transplanted uh, I don't think that the roots were quite well established so the leaves kind of wilted a little bit one of those plants didn't make it at all so I had to replace that you can see the one that is so much smaller than the other three is the one that I had to replace the tomatoes, at this point, two weeks after putting them into the ground, the tomatoes are looking really well. I uh, planted a couple of San Marzano plants. We have four Amish paste. We planted one cherry tomato and one better boy. And each one of those plants is showing 
uh, significant growth. Uh, even though some of those early leaves look a little bit brown just from the transplant process. One thing that's a mystery though are the two San Marzano plants. They were the same size when I planted them and uh, planted them on the same day and you can see there's a, a market difference in, in their size and don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it's just genetics. Some things however did not go so well. We also planted garlic chive and at my first investigation those did not that did not come up. The garlic chive is something that we also have to plant because of food sensitivity. They belong uh, garlic itself belongs in a group of foods called fructans. I think it's fructans. It's either fructans or FODMAPs. One of those two things. But both of those things are issues for the missus. She cannot have garlic. And we use, well, we used to use a lot of garlic. At least I did when I would cook. But she can't have it. It creates some serious health problems for her. We discovered this stuff called garlic chives. We usually buy it in powdered form. And it's fairly expensive. But one of the things the company did was in the last uh, bottle of that stuff we bought, they sent us a packet of seeds. So we're thinking, hmm, let's give this a try. So we planted it, and after two weeks, there was no signs of anything, at least not when we first looked at it. A little bit later in the afternoon, as I was wrapping things up, I was going back by the garden just to make sure I picked everything up properly, and I happened to look down, and the faintest of teeny tiny green blades caught my eye. And as I looked a little bit closer, these little thin wispy hairs of the garlic chives are starting to come up through the soil. So we're hoping that that's going to go well. The thing that baffled me the most though is why my green beans did not come up. Green beans are the easiest thing in the world to grow. You throw the seed on the ground and you poke it down below the surface of the dirt and you got green beans and you'll get green beans out the wazoo or the yin yang or whatever other euphemism you want to use for being really surprised at how much surplus you have. This has never happened to me before and I couldn't figure out why. So I decided to do a little bit of investigating to see what had happened. Let's look in the soil and this will be interesting to edit. Let's look into this soil and see what we got going on. We got a wet seed that did not germinate. I wonder if it got too much water. Let's see. Here's another one. It's kind of smushy. It's looking more and more like they could have possibly been planted too deep and then they just they got wet and just sort of rotted. I think that's what's happened. After replanting my green beans, it was time to plant my potatoes. I'd been waiting for my potatoes, to, um, my seedlings to come so that I could uh, get those going. Had originally planned to grow five or six uh, grow bags of potatoes. I decided I'd plant a little bit more. Uh, had to figure out how I wanted to lay those out, where I was gonna put those, I uh, spent some time just sort of figuring out the best place. I uh, did some experimenting of some layouts. Um, here is kind of what I was envisioning. I ended up putting them closer together and I used my lawnmower as um, guidance for how far apart to put them because I wanted to just be able to push the mower between them and not have to use my trimmer if I didn't have to because I don't want to risk getting in there with the weed trimmer and uh, the string trimmer and having it to rip one of my bags. I like to use these bags for a while. 
Uh, you can also see in the background there's some uh, some painted dimensional lumber there. Um, got a bit of future video coming out about that. Um, when I realized I had that, that's when I decided instead of planting five or six grow bags of potatoes that I would plant eight grow bags with Yukon Gold potatoes. After finishing getting the potatoes going into the growth bag, the grow bags and getting those in place, I had to just call it a day. There were so many other things that really needed to be done, but you know, at this point I had to switch gears and do some other things that were not garden related. Thanks so much for tuning back in just to see this two week garden update. I really appreciate you watching it. Will you do me a favor? Will you give it a thumbs up? maybe even share it with someone else who might enjoy watching my attempts at turning this place into a suburban homestead and don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with the daily progress and see the mistakes and hopefully begin to see some victories in this goal and above all else always remember the one who created you made you able to create also so get out there and make it grow it, and live it. See you next time.